Good evening from Xfinity Center. As the pep band plays on, this is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne Viner, Rick Jacklich, Dave Preston for WTOP, Maryland 72, Notre Dame 51. Guys, what are your instant takeaways, Rick? Is it Maryland struggled early, they couldn't shoot, but uh, boy, they guarded well. And uh, their name just struggled the whole night. So Turks put them away uh, with a nice run and won by 21. I'm going to say first, defense was the difference. They held Notre Dame to 29%, shooting 7 of 25 from three-point range. With the exception of a couple stretches in the second half, they contained John Mooney. He never really got into his groove, and it takes a village to defend him. A lot of different guys need to participate offensively ball movement. I think I want to say that uh, 17 of their first 25 baskets were assisted. When you do that, you're going to get a good win like you did this evening. Moody had almost half the points. He had 17 points. He had 12 rebounds. But Maryland really did a good job with them. And you see there was just no other offense uh, that Notre Dame had. So it's a team win for Maryland. And what I really liked was the fact we had uh, contributions from Ricky Mooney. Right. We saw Sorrell Smith back and forth. And uh, just Spurs threw a lot of bodies out, and this kind of grinded but, game that made a big difference. My takeaway is the intense defense. When you see Maryland play defense at that level, you just know the offense is coming. See Wiggins, that engaged, that energy level. It might take them a couple minutes, but you see it on the offensive end. You saw it on Sunday. You saw it again today. The more engaged there, if they play defense like that, you can actually win something. Especially when Wiggins struggled so early with his yeah. shot. I think he was 2-7 early. He just couldn't find his shot. Hit two big threes down later in the game and give him a little more confidence. Energy level doesn't show up on the stat sheet, but it definitely comes through, and it gets you quality wins against Power 5 schools like you saw here tonight against Notre Dame. It was nice to see Jalen Smith against another quote-unquote big team put up the night he did. 15 points, 16 rebounds, his fifth double-double of the season. He had five all last year. You mentioned Eric Ayala. He had uh, 14, including nine during that 16-4 stretch that really blew the game open late in the first half. It was a one-point game. By the time Eric was done scoring, it was a double-digit contest. And they did that first half without Cowan. Cowan was really quiet. Well, it, uh, it, I think he finished with nine points. You know, quiet, lately, nine lately he has been. I think he's really trying to play point guard. Then they need him to score, and he's taking over some games later. But I like the flexibility of having someone who actually wants to play point guard and then can become your main score. With 3.56 to go in the half, I put up on Terrapin Times, we're going to take this half 28 to 17. If they were going to go to a 12-2 run, with 1.15 to go in the half, they had already gotten to that, and they just took off. You cannot defend the wave after wave that Maryland has. And how about Wiggins' uh, schoolyard? Or actually, I think I used to do that back in my room, but it was, it was with the Nerf sure. ball. Yeah. Missed a three, comes in, slam dunks to end the first half. What an exclamation point. What a way to send the fans uh, into halftime. Been trying to teach him to follow a shot. He's fine. Listen, yeah, he, he shot Big that. Chuck, he dunked it just like Rick Jacklitz with a donut and a cup of coffee. Uh, this is the Big Dog Post Game Show. We will be back in College Park in a moment. <laughs> The Jacklitz Law Group's successes have resulted in many distinguished awards, including Best Personal Injury Trial Law Firm USA, Maryland's Personal Injury Attorney of the Year twice, and Super Lawyers designation every single year. We succeed because we're willing to try cases, and insurance companies know it. That's why their claim reps often grumble they pay us more in settlements than any other lawyers. You deserve a great lawyer. If you've been hurt in a car, truck, or train crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1. Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C., Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301 
251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Dave Preston had to go in and uh, get set up for the press conference. We thank him for being on. And, of course, we thank Viner Forgates in Rockville and Meyer Consulting Engineers. We got the score sheet out in front of us. I'm going to go with Ayala. Gets the 14 points. Let Maryland scoring for a bit. Keeps getting to the basket. Keeps hitting the threes. He even had a flying dunk that is probably, he'll give 100% of the credit to Rick Tark for changing his body, that he can actually play like that. Boy, I tell you what, Kyle Tark does a great job getting these kids ready to play. But Ayala, he's such a mature point guard, and he's just so smooth. He always makes the right decision, and this is the kind of game where it really makes a difference. Just having the two ball handlers that Mark Turgeon can put out there in Anthony Cowan and Eric Ayala both. All right, Smith, the 15 points and 16 boards. Four and six blocks. Wow. You know, he's like like you said earlier to me, Tim Duncan. You know, he's a stat stuffer, and you see that all the way. And uh, he's such a big presence inside, and when he, they get the ball into him, he's, he's good at the line too, which he showed tonight. Maryland shoots 40% from the floor. They were horrible. 0 for 10 from three. They finish uh, 8 for 19, ends up being almost 30%, and shoot about 72% from the line. They only have seven turnovers and they were had a really sloppy game but only seven turnovers four in the first half they're going to win a lot of games a lot of games with uh, less than 10 turnovers so they uh and they they guard so well you saw that against marquette you saw that tonight uh they're dedicated to guarding but that looks new to me they played defense before but that, that fanaticism of defense is what wins a uh, team that's been a fanatic defensive team, Virginia, goes to Big Ten's Purdue and just gets swamped tonight. They were losing by 25 in the second half. Isn't it nice to see people in orange pants unhappy? <laughs> it yeah, warms it, my heart. Well, that, that lacrosse non-goal that sent Maryland NCAA tournament still kills Bruce. But speaking of orange pants, Illinois comes in on Saturday at 5 o'clock. Uh, they lost to Miami two nights ago, but first Big Ten action. Take it you're super excited for that. Well, remember the Illinois game last year of Madison Square Garden. Maryland had a big lead early in that first half and then just everything went wrong. So uh, they got to be ready and uh, conference play. It's a whole different ball game. Right. Hey, Rick, thanks for being on the thanks, post game, on your post game show. <laughs> uh, Bruce, obviously away from the microphone. Mason will be back in two weeks. We'll hope to see him at the Seton Hall game in New Jersey. And that'll do it from Xfinity Center tonight. The Turks, 72, Notre Dame, 51. Good evening.